Hey guys, happy new year, Mr. Larson here. Um, today we're gonna go through 4.2, which is the unit circle. Uh, this is gonna focus specifically on the unit circle and a couple um, other skills that we need to work with it. <clears throat> and uh, just wanted to say, first of all, I just realized that I, I've been giving you guys a video of my mirror image. So I haven't like done my hair a different way. This is this is how it's supposed to be, okay? this The window is supposed to be over my left shoulder. I'm also right-handed. You guys might have thought I was lefty. It took me an entire semester to realize that that was happening. Secondly, um, these are my Call of Duty headphones. Uh, don't be a hater, okay? Um, a wise woman once told me, haters gonna hate, 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 hate. Six hates, okay. All right, so let's, let's get going with this. It's time for math. Okay, unit circle. Here's what it looks like. You guys have seen it before. Here is a blank one. This is going to be filled in in no time. All right. Um, notes. First thing, Pythagorean theorem. Got to know it. It's very easy. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. This is for any right triangle only. All right. Don't try to use that with a non-right triangle. Um, C is the hypotenuse. So that's the variable that gets squared by itself. And then we add the other two legs after we square them, and that, that gives us C squared, okay? So first thing I want to do, let's talk about two specific special triangles. The first one is a 45-45-90 triangle. That's referring to the side lengths. So um, let's assume we have a right triangle with a hypotenuse of 1. Uh, it's a 45-degree, 45-degree. Uh, since those are congruent, the sides opposite from them are going to be congruent as well. So we'll call these X and X since I don't know the, um, the length of them. But then using, uh, I'm sorry, using Pythagorean theorem, we can figure out what X is equal to, right? X squared plus X squared equals one squared. That gives me two X squared equals one. Divide by two, I get X squared is one half square root that son of a gun and we get x equals i don't need plus or minus we're not going to have a negative length so i only need the positive so square root of one over square root of two well we know the square root of one that's just one so one over root two and then depending on your exposure to the unit circle um i think that a lot of math three teachers left it like this uh in pre-calc, we're not going to leave it like this. We're not allowed to have a radical on the denominator. So we need to do something called rationalizing that denominator, which means if I multiply the top and bottom by that radical, by root 2 over root 2, which is really just a fancy version of 1, uh, that's going to give me root 2 on the numerator. And 2 times 2 is 4. Square root of 4, which is 2 on the denominator. By the way, there's a, that's not a coincidence that I got the same value that was already there, just without the root. That's going to happen when you do this process. Okay, so uh, this is going to be square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. That 2 is not under the root on the denominator anymore. Okay? So there is a 45, 45, 90 with a hypotenuse of 1. Next, uh, this is a 60, 60, 60 equilateral equiangular triangle. Every side length is one, let's assume. Okay, I'm going to take an altitude from that left corner, move it across. That's going to create a right angle here. Okay, and I'm going to ignore the bottom half. And what I've just done is created a right triangle. This top angle is still 60. This is 30. Right, I'm, I'm cutting that 60 degree in half. I'm also cutting this side length of one in half, so that's going to be one half. Okay, my red side, I'm going to call x because I don't know it, but we're going to solve for that again using Pythagorean theorem. So x squared plus one half squared equals hypotenuse squared. Right, so x squared plus one half. Oh, times one half is one fourth equals one. Subtract one fourth, I get x squared equals 
3 fourths square root again. I get x equals, I don't need plus or minus on this, but it's going to be root 3 over root 4, which is just 2, right? So this side here is root 3 over 2. These two triangles, 45, 45, 90, and 30, 60, 90, appear over and over and over again when we go around the unit circle, okay? Um, these are the only two triangles that you see. So these are the only coordinates you're going to see, um, other than at, at what we're calling our quadrant angles, and I'll show you that in a second, okay? So these are very, very important numbers. Obviously, the 1 is important, too. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go on the right here, the unit circle. What is it? It's a circle with a radius equal to one unit. That's why it's called the unit circle. I would remember that, okay? You may have a quiz question. Um, it is a circle with a radius equal to one unit. It's not because units are written all over the unit circle. That's probably the most common wrong answer I get. Okay, uh, The unit circle is centered at zero, zero. And the point of the unit circle is to help us understand something about trig values, mainly sine and cosine, but we can find all of the other trig values for these 16 specific angles that we're going to draw in on the unit circle, okay? We'll be able to figure out without a calculator what the sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent values are for all of the angles, okay? Uh, and then in terms of conquering the unit circle, um, this is kind of the four things we need. First two are, are memorization. Memorize all the degree measures all the way around, and then memorize all the radian measures. Every angle can be measured in degrees, or radians. It's like using inches or centimeters, right? It's just two different languages to describe the same thing. Thirdly, we're going to memorize the coordinates, x comma y, in quadrant one only. And then we can use reflections to figure out the coordinates in the other three quadrants. All right, so let's just kind of go step by step. First thing we'll do is get the degree measures for all 16 angles. So let's go to our blank unit circle. And we're going to start all the way out to the right. And this is zero degrees. Uh, if we went a full circle, it would be 360 degrees. So let's draw that in too. It's the same angle, right? The, this point here, straight out to the right, uh, that could be zero degrees. Or if I did a full circle, a coterminal angle would be 360 degrees. Zero degrees is also zero radians. Um, I think we multiplied by pi over 180, right? 360 times pi over 180. 360 over 180 is 2, so that's 2 pi, right? 2 pi. Uh, straight up, that's called a quadrant angle if it lies on the dividing line between two quadrants, right? That's between quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. That's 90 degrees. 90 degrees. Let's do radians. 90 over 180 is 1 over 2. That's pi over 2, right? Okay, so every quadrant is 90 degrees. That means this down here is 180. Every quadrant is pi over 2 radian. So that means that's 1 pi over 2. This would be 2 pi over 2, or pi. Add another 90, I get 270 degrees. Add another pi over 2, I would get 3 pi over 2. And then add another 90 and another pi over 2, and that gets you back to that 360 and 2 pi. All right, next, I'm going to focus on, I'm calling these my 45s, right? All these um, angles that are halfway between the, the quadrants. So this is 45 degrees. And if I do 45 times pi over 180, 45 over 180 is 1 over 4, so we get pi over 4. So every 45 degrees, um, let's fill in all the angles every 45, right? So add 45, that gets me to 90. 
add 45 more that gets me to 135 add 45 more is 180 add it again I get 225 again is 270 one more time is 315 and the last time gets me to that 360 let's do that same thing with radians pi over 4 right so every 45 is another pi over 4 well here's 2 pi over 4 here's 3 pi over 4 here's 4 pi over 4 5 pi over 4 6 pi over 4 7 pi over 4 okay we're getting there next let's do the very first angle I see as I move up from 0 degrees so this is 30 degrees and if I ignore the 45s everything else is spaced out by 30 degrees so here's 30 degrees actually let me do this 30 let's convert to radians 30 over 180 that's the same as 3 over 18 that's 1 sixth so this is pi over 6 add 30 that gets me to 60 add 30 that gets me to 90 add it again 120 150 180 210 240 270 300 as I'm told they say tree 30 it's late what can I say all right so and then again it gets me to 360 now let's do radians every 30 is a pi over 6 so here's 1 pi over 6 here's 2 pi over 6 3 pi over 6 4 pi over 6 I'm reducing right 5 pi over 6 6 pi over 6 7 pi over 6 8 pi over 6 9 pi over 6 10 pi over 6 11 pi that's my favorite one 11 pi over 6 and then 12 pi over 6 okay so we have all of our degrees all of our radians we just finished the first two steps in conquering the unit circle okay now let's back up let's look at three specific angles these are all quadrant one angles okay 30 degrees 30 degrees remember from the the triangle that we just solved right this 30 60 90 I know some side lengths the longer side is root 3 over 2 the shorter side is 1 half longer side shorter side okay 45 45 90 was like that and the 60 well that's the opposite of the 30 right the shorter side one half longer side root 3 over 2 so <clears throat> let's let's look at this real quick let's focus on 30 degrees this point out here that touches the edge of the circle if I'm if I'm starting at 0 0 which we said this was centered at the origin the coordinates of this point out here are the distance I travel to the right and the distance up well that's the same as the side lengths right so the coordinates here are root 3 over 2 comma 1 half so if we use those coordinates <clears throat> I can do that same thing with the other two angles we did here right so let's fill these in we have root 3 over 2 comma 1 half for 30 degrees 45 degrees we know is going to be root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2 60 degrees is going to be the same as 30 but reversed right so this would be 1 half comma root 3 over 2 and what we're really doing is we're, we're finding the coordinates of these points out here right where the the angle where the ray hits the edge of the circle so um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and figure out quadrant two now so I can use quadrant one so this is the cool thing quadrant one let's take that lowest angle we'll highlight those then we'll do the 45s in yellow and then we'll do the top angle in blue so these are reflections right Th this 
let's go with uh, 30 degrees first. This point at 30 degrees and the point over at, what is that, 150 degrees, those are reflected over the y-axis. Well, that's not gonna change your y-coordinate, that's gonna change your x-coordinate. So the y-coordinate's gonna stay the same, one half. The x-coordinate stays the same, but it becomes the opposite, right? It's, it's gonna be negative root three over two. And that shouldn't make sense, right? Because um, everything in quadrant two is gonna have a negative x value. You have to go to the left to find that, right? So let's do the yellow angle, the 45. Uh, root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2. I'm going to reflect that over here to 135 degrees. So that's going to have uh, my x will be negative, but the same value. Y is identical. Okay, now let's go for this blue angle, uh, 60 degrees to 120. Switch the sign on the x. Keep the y exactly the same. Okay, so there is your quadrant 2 angles. Let's take quadrant two and get down to quadrant three. So again, let's do some highlighting. My middle one is yellow. Uh, closest to the x-axis is green, and then the farthest one is blue. So from quadrant two, I'm still to the left, so my x should still be negative, but I'm reflecting over the x-axis. My y is gonna change signs, right? So um, let's go green first. Uh, I'm going to multiply the y coordinate by negative 1. Come on, Larson, what's your deal? All right, so this will be negative root 2 over 2 and negative root 2 over 2, right? And both should be negative. The x is negative because I'm going left. The y is negative because I'm going down. So that should make sense. Next, let's do the 45, the yellow one. So, oh, I screwed that one up. That was really sad. Let me fix that. That's my first mistake of the semester. Okay, so this would be negative root three over two, negative one half. Second one is the root two over two. What was that? Root two over two, negative root two over two. And then the blue is one half comma root three over two, both negative. Okay, um, again, let's go to quadrant four. Now you can go from quadrant one or from quadrant three. I'm gonna go back to quadrant one since that's kind of our anchor, right? So green, yellow, blue. And let's see, let's do 330. So that's the green one. So that's root three over two. I'm gonna flip the sign on the Y coordinate now. X is positive. Y is negative. Okay. So we're done, right? I, I didn't have to, well, at least with those three angles in each quadrant, I didn't have to memorize anything. As long as I knew quadrant one, which I can either memorize or remember with my special triangles, I can figure out the rest of them. So a lot of people try to sit here and memorize the entire unit circle. The angles in degrees and radians, that'll come. You'll practice that enough where that'll come. If you can memorize the three angles in quadrant one and then use reflections or think about um, Actually, this, this is a great way to think about it. In quadrant two here, okay, in quadrant two, every angle should have a negative X value and a positive Y value, right? Because you're going left and up. In quadrant three, should be negative comma negative, right? Negative comma negative. In quadrant four, it's positive comma negative, right? Because you're going right and then down. And of course, in quadrant one, it's gonna be positive, comma, positive. So that helps a ton, that helps a ton. All right, so we're, we're obviously not done yet because I didn't do 0, 90, 180, and 270 for the, for the coordinates. Well, remember, the, the radius of this circle is one, so these are easy, right? If you're going straight out to the right, that's gonna be one, zero. 
you're going straight up, that's 0, 1. Straight left, negative 1, 0. Straight down, 0, negative 1. In all of its glory, there's our completed unit circle. Nice job. All right, guys, so last thing I want to talk about, which is like the whole point of why we're doing this, right? Uh, if I want to use the unit circle, let's look at this 30 degree angle here. Um, so I've uh, labeled the size of this triangle, right? Um, if I ask for the sine of 30 degrees, we know Sokotoa, since this is a right triangle, Sokotoa says the sine of 30 should equal opposite over hypotenuse, which is really just one half. Okay, sine is one half. Cosine of 30. So Katoa tells me adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so you can see the sine value shows up as your y coordinate. This cosine value shows up as your x coordinate. And that should make sense because the whole point of using this unit circle is um, getting a hypotenuse of one, which comes from the radius, uh, because then you don't have to really divide by the hypotenuse. If it's just one, you don't have to divide by it. It's not going to change your value. So all in all, every angle here, if you have X comma Y, that really represents your cosine of your angle comma your sine of the angle. Okay, so these coordinates that we see all the way around, cosine, comma, sine, cosine, comma, sine, cosine, comma, sine, for that particular angle, okay? Um, the way I remember this, x, comma, y, those are alphabetical. Cosine comes before sine, c comes before s, alphabetically. So a lot of people will switch up and think it's sine, comma, cosine. Other thing, uh, tangent, um, that comes from toa opposite over adjacent. Well, if this is our angle, opposite over adjacent would be my vertical side over my horizontal side, your y over your x. Okay, so tangent of theta is y over x, or you can think of that as sine over cosine. All right, so how is this going to help us um, like for our homework assignment or tests or quizzes, what kind of problems are we going to see? Um, let me go over a couple with you. So if you feel confident, you don't have to watch this, but I think this will be beneficial. So if we see, uh, let me go over here. Let's look at like number six, for example. All right. So um, T equals pi over three. What are we supposed to do? Find the point X comma Y on the unit circle that corresponds with the real number t. So basically what we're saying is pi over three on the unit circle, what's your x comma y? So using our unit circle for today, if you need to use the completed one, that's fine. We find pi over three, okay? And I tell x comma y. So that would be one half comma root three over two. That's it. So Number six, one half root three over two. Not bad, right? Same thing. Number 12, pi. Pi is down here. So that would be negative one comma zero would be my answer for that. Okay, let's get a little more advanced here. All right. So let's say... I was going to do number 28. Okay, let's do 28. So this says, evaluate if possible the six trigonometric functions of the real number. So 7 pi over 4. I want to find sine of 7 pi over 4, cosine, tangent, and then cosecant, secant, cotangent. Okay, 7 pi over 4. Let's go find it. That's down here. So my cosine 
is root 2 over 2. Sine was the y value that was negative root 2 over 2. Tangent, again, is my y over my x, or my sine over cosine. So tangent should be uh, sine over cosine, which is, those are the same values, right? Except the top is negative, so that's going to be negative 1. And then cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So I'm just going to flip that on its head, right? Negative 2 over root 2. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Negative 1 over 1. Flip that. That's still negative 1, right? Now the only thing here is that for cosecant and secant, I want to rationalize. Oh, I can reduce that too, right? Secant. And cotangent. Okay, and then the other type of problem you're going to see uh, let's look at 32. So if I look at 32, this says evaluate the trig function using its period as an aid. Okay, so that, use the unit circle. So sine of 9 pi over 4. Here's my angle. Now the unit circle goes from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, Any other angle, if it's outside of that range, does not appear on the unit circle. However, uh, we can use what we learned a few days ago, coterminal angles, to find basically equivalent angles that do fall within that range of 0 to 2 pi. So 9 pi over 4 that's too big, right? 2 pi would be 8 pi over 4. So I need to take 9 pi over 4 and find a coterminal angle that lands between 0 and 2 pi. So I need to get smaller. So I'm going to subtract 2 pi. Well, I need to find a common denominator, right? So 2 pi, that's going to be 8 pi over 4, right? Because 8 over 4 is 2. So that's going to be 1 pi over 4. So what we're saying is, instead of finding the sine of 9 pi over 4, I'm going to find the sine of 1 pi over 4, and it's going to be the exact same as the sine of 9 pi over 4. Well, the sine of pi over 4 is easy, right? Let's go to that angle in the unit circle, pi over 4. Sine is my y value, cosine, comma, sine. Yeah, so it would be root 2 over 2. So the sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, and the sine of 9 pi over 4 is also going to be root 2 over 2. Okay, so don't be intimidated if you see an angle that doesn't land within 0 to 2 pi. Use coterminals to figure that out. All right, thanks guys.